it can be easy to develop a mentality that learning takes place either maybe outside the home, in a learning environment, a learning building, a planned class. It can also maybe feel like maybe learning is something I have to plan for and have a book to guide me. But maybe you could help us develop a mindset that would make learning a more natural part of our day-to-day -day life. So for example, what about learning about nature or science? How could that look in a home? There are so many opportunities to learn about science and specifically nature surrounding us wherever we live, whether we're in the middle of a city or out in the country or in the suburbs or at the beach, wherever our home is, we are surrounded by nature. And so we can have so many learning opportunities. The easiest way is to get each child and yourself a blank sketchbook or even just some sheets of paper if you don't have access to sketchbooks. And then go outside, that's the key right there, to get into nature, we need to go outside and look around you and just pause and breathe and mm, look and I... listen. Mm -hmm. It's so easy for us to go outside with an agenda. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going out because I'm going to get the mail and then I'm coming back in. Or mm -hmm. I'm going out because I'm going to mow the lawn and then I'm coming back in. But if, if we're doing, getting out into nature to learn from it, we need to just let our shoulders relax and take mm -hmm. our time. So we go outside and just look around you, look mm -hmm. up, See what the weather is like. What is the sky? What is the sky like? Look at eye level. What do you see at eye level? Look down. What do you see down at the ground level? And just look all around you. Use all your senses that you can safely. Mm -hmm. Look and listen. Feel the wind and the heat or whatever the temperature is. Um, probably don't taste very much of it, but you can, you can use your other senses easily. And then on that sheet of paper, you can just draw or write what you are observing. Hmm. So I like it's, a, that. it's a great way to record a growing relationship with hmm. nature around you. Mm -hmm. It's easy to feel like well, I can't study it because I don't know exactly what its name is. You know, mm -hmm. if I go out there and I, what if, what if I come across a tree that I don't know? Well, that's fine. You can still get to know that tree, even if you don't know its name yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll probably figure out its name after a little while. So just start in your own yard. Do you know what kind of trees you have in your yard? Do you know what kind of bushes you have? Do you know what kind of grass you have? Do you know all of the birds that like to come and visit? Mm. What about the insects that come? Down here in Georgia, we're getting close to Japanese beetle time. Oh, we all have fun. those in Virginia. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> so I was just reading in um, Anna Green Gables the other day. And she, in one of the sequels to Anna Green Gables, she mentioned those little bugs that were eating the leaves. And it's like, oh, I recognize that. That, she was talking about Japanese beetle. Mm -hmm. And so, but that comes from taking that time outside to mm -hmm. just observe and see what there is. And then you can easily take digital pictures of some of the things like, you know, the birds will probably fly away before you can get them drawn completely. Mm -hmm. But if you take a digital picture of it, then come in and put it on your computer and blow it up big so you can see it and then draw from that picture. You can learn so much about a bird or a plant and your child can also from trying to draw it. That's a wonderful exercise. And then you can go to these wonderful websites like allaboutbirds.org um, and you can hear the different calls that the birds make. So you'll be able to track them by what call you're hearing mm -hmm. and you can learn more about that bird and its habits. What does it like to eat? Mm -hmm. Then put that in your bird feeder 
so that it will keep coming back and you can watch how does it interact with other birds? Does it perch on the bird feeder like it's king of the hill and stay there? Or does it come grab something and then flit away and go mm -hmm. eat where it feels more protected? Mm -hmm. Observing those habits and the characteristics of the nature friends, let's call them, all around you is a great way to do science with your children. Well, I love how you describe this because we know from science that being outside, being in nature, and being slow and attentive to nature is calming. It produces endorphins, it produces other chemicals in the brain that bring us down from stress. And you're also talking about a relationship building with creation, with all the creatures around us. And that too is a happy place in a person's mind. And especially when you're working through a, a difficult subject or having a stressful day, going out and relating to, the, to nature in these ways is very calming and a wonderful way to build towards science. You talked about looking up, looking at eye level and looking down, and then continuing to foster those relationships by watching those creatures, watching the trees change leaves, watching the birds talk to one another and steal food, as you mentioned. So I love all that. It just feels very sweet and gentle and doable for anybody. Even if you're stuck inside and you need to just look out the window, you can begin some of these um, really helpful tips. Thank you, Sonia. I feel calmer just talking about it. <laughs> oh, good. 